Once again, we're back talking about another gemstone, something we've probably heard of, but we don't know much about. Peridot, or some people like to call it peridot. This is the formula for peridot, and it's mainly consisted of iron and magnesium. The more iron there is inside this gemstone, the greener it gets, and it's vice versa. The less iron it has, the lighter the green gets, and it seems more yellow. But for it to actually turn more yellow, it needs to have more chromium inside it. And if you've seen our video about chromium, you'll know why it creates that green color. Most gemstones are created in Earth's crust, but just like diamonds, peridot is created inside the mantle which is deep beneath Earth's crust, right here. So what you're saying is that humans dug all the way down there to pull this peridot out? No, it's not like that, because that would be crazy. The peridot got hand-delivered to us, but it took a long time, because it came with a volcano. So anywhere on Earth you can find peridot, there's probably a volcano nearby. There are other methods that you can get peridot as well. Like for example, this is a peridot that was taken out of a meteor. These types of peridot are extremely rare, but you can still find them. And to know where it came from is pretty much impossible, because these asteroids were coming from space for probably millions of years, and they, they crash landed on Earth without burning up in the atmosphere. And millions of years later, we found them. So it's quite impressive that we actually have these. You can find these peridots everywhere too, like in China, in the US, which are completely different sides of the world, but you can find the same material. Usually the most common way you can find peridot is between basalt rock. These rocks are created inside a volcano and when it erupts it comes out and hardens. So that is the reason you can find peridot inside them. Do you know what place consists the most amount of peridot? Right here. It's in the Red Sea and it's called the St. John's Island or the Zebarjad Island. This is a very small island and it belongs to Egypt. Around 300 BC, it was the first time that the Egyptians started using this gemstone for their jewelry and they first found it on this island. The biggest peridot was also found in this island is a 311 carat piece, which is insane. And right now you can see it in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, DC. In terms of countries, the most amount of peridot you can find is in the country of Afghanistan and Pakistan. But in terms of density, it's mostly in the Zebrajid Island. But for reserves, these two countries win the cake. You could say that peridots were the kryptonite of emeralds. It is insane that you can mistake peridot with emerald, which is a highly precious gemstone, and it's much rarer and much more expensive. Even in ancient Egypt, where emerald was extremely valuable, sometimes they mistake peridot with emeralds. When they tested some of Cleopatra's jewelry, they realized that some sections it had peridots instead of emeralds, and that was by mistake. You can't mistake all peridots with emeralds. It's a only a rare amount that looks very similar to emerald, and you could imitate it. If you look at peridots under the microscope or a magnifying glass, you could find some black spots. These black spots are called stress marks, and you could say this is an indicator that for sure tells the jeweler or whoever that's checking it, this is a piece of peridot and you can't mistake it with any other gem. If the experts cannot find these stress marks or black dots, there is another method they could use. There are these needle-like cracks inside peridot that indicates that this is genuine peridot and it's not something like emerald or anything else. Of course, all of these have to be looked at under a magnifying glass and these are different methods jewelers use to tell these gemstones apart. Even though peridots were created deep in the Earth's mantle and they came out of a volcano, they do not like heat. If you give them too much heat, they could crack. Even if you put a piece of peridot inside your pocket and put your pants inside the washing machine, the heat of the washing machine could crack this gemstone, so you have to be very careful handling it. 
Just like we said, you can find plenty of peridot next to locations that have volcanoes, like St. John's Island, Afghanistan and Pakistan, but they don't actually open up a mine and take it out of the ground. The most amount of peridot that's collected around the world is in this location called Manchuria, China. Most of the world's peridot is from here usually. When the French first visited Egypt and they got familiar with peridot, they got familiar with the Arabic name for gem, which is Faradat. When they heard this, they used this name on peridot, and that is the reason it's called peridot, because that's what the French call it now. In English, you can call it peridot or peridot. The Romans were also introduced to peridot with the Egyptians when they took over, and when they saw it for the first time, they called it night emeralds, because unlike emeralds which are dark at night, peridots shine at night. There is another interesting story about the Zebrajet or St. John's Island that is good to know. When ancient Egyptians first visited this island, it was infested with snakes. But when they realized there's so many gemstones here, especially the peridots, they were willing to risk their lives for their leaders so they can collect these gemstones. And they visited here so much that they eradicated the snakes that used to live here. So there is no living animal on St. John's Island. You should be familiar with Hawaii because we've made a video on it. Hawaii is basically an island range that are all volcanoes. And millions of years ago, they came out of the ocean floor and that is why they're still mostly active. So that means there's a lot of peridot around this island. Native Hawaiians have a goddess named Pele. Pele is basically the goddess of volcano, and that is why they called peridots Tears of Pele, because it comes out of the volcano. Unlike other gemstones like diamonds and sapphires, you can't find lab peridots. It might be because it's not insanely expensive like these four gemstones. That is why they don't create it in a laboratory because it's not worth their time and money. So how much is this gemstone anyways? Compared to the four precious gemstones, it's much cheaper, especially when it's smaller. Of course, the quality and the size speaks for everything. On average, it's between $50 to $500 per carat, depending on the quality. There's a chance that a one carat gem could cost more than a five carat that's way low quality. So a one carat ring of peridot could cost $250 or $70. But the price could get crazy. Not for a one carat piece. When you go over 10 carats, that's when the price gets crazy. Like if you see a peridot ring with a 10 carat piece, it could cost around $17,000. So the bigger the gem gets and the quality stays the same, the price goes up exponentially. Like the 311 carat piece that's in the museum, you can't really put a price on it because it's by itself and there is nothing else you can compare it to. Just like a huge piece of diamond.